1987, Osama bin Laden dispatched his mother-in-law, Muhammad Jamal Khalifa, to the Philippines to find recruits willing to go to Afghanistan. It is estimated that he finds approximately about 1,000 recruits. One of them is Abjurak Janjalani, who emerges as the leader of these recruits in Afghanistan. When the Afghanistan war ends in 1989, most of them will return to the Philippines and form the Abu Sayyaf group, still led by Janjalani. Journalist John Conley will write in his book, first published in 1999, that Abu Sayyaf will become the most violent and radical Islamist group in the Far East using its CIA and Pakistan ISI training to harass, attack, and murder Christian priests, wealthy non-Muslim plantation owners and merchants, and local government in the southern Philippine island of Mindano. After he had read Conley's book and gathering information from other sources, Senator Aquilo Pinatel, president of the Philippine Senate, will say in a 2000 speech that the CIA has sired a monster because it helped train the this core of Abu Sayyaf. Muhammad Jamal Khalifa, who is Bin Laden's brother-in-law, moves to the Philippines and sets up numerous financial fronts to benefit al-Qaeda. Khalifa is not one of only Bin Laden's brother-in-laws, but he also says during the 1980s, Osama was his best friend, more like a brother. In the mid-1980s, Khalifa was already a very senior member of the Muslim Brotherhood in Lebanon and ran the Peshawar, Pakistan office of the Muslim World League, where he was active in sending recruits to fight the Soviets in Afghanistan. Sent to the Philippines by bin Laden early in 1987, he married two Filipino women. He sets up more than a dozen businesses and charities, all of which appeared to be fronts to fund the Abu Sayyaf and the Moral Islamic Liberation Front, another Philippine militant group. The Islamic Wisdom Worldwide Mission, which will later be blamed for funneling bin Laden money to militants, the International Relations and Information Center, which is later seen as the main funding vehicle for the Bajinka plot, and the Philippine branch of the International Islamic Relief Organization, founded in September of 1991. The IIRO does some charity book, but a Philippine cabinet official will later note that it built up the goodwill of the community through charity and then turned segments of the population into agents. The IIRO is a charity suspected of funding militant activities in numerous places around the world, but the U.S. has been reluctant to prosecute it due its direct links to the Saudi government. Khalifa is not only the first head of the IIRO Philippine branch, but also the IIRO's regional director for all of Southeast Asia. The offices are, of, are often staffed by members of the Abu Sayyaf and the Moral Islamic Liberation Front. For instance, one IIRO branch office director is also the Abu Sayyaf's intelligence chief, and he's later killed in June of 1994. A Philippine government undercover operative later says that bomber Ramzi Yusuf comes to the Philippines in early 1989. The operative, Edward Angeles, is posting as a member of this militant group, the Moral Islamic Liberation Front. Angeles will later claim that Yusuf approaches him as the personal envoy of bin Laden and is looking to set up a new base of operations on the rebellious Muslim land of Mindano. Bin Laden's brother-in-law, Khalifa, is already in the Philippines setting up charity fronts. These early contacts will contribute to the creation of Abu Sayyaf, an offshoot of the Moral Islamic Front. Yusuf had been studying electrical engineering in Wales until 1989. He first went to Afghanistan in 88 to learn bomb making at a bin Laden camp. After graduating, he moved to Afghanistan with his father, two of his brothers, and his uncle, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, and he's already fighting with bin Laden. Another organization founded by Khalifa, uh, well, according to the Philippines, uh, National Security Advisor Rolo Golez, Khalifa built up the goodwill of the community and then uh, was a detriment to society as many of these people then started to become spies and assets for Khalifa, bin Laden, and Abu Sayyaf. The first record U.S. authorities had of Khalifa reportedly came in 1992 when his alias, Bara, appeared on a bomb-making manual carried by Ahmed Ajaj, who went to the United States with a false passport. On December 1st, 1994, Khalifa met Mohammed Loal Bayezd, a 
president of the Benevolence International Foundation in the United States. Khalifa and Baez were arrested on December 14, 1994 in Mountain View, California, on charges related to the 1993 World Trade Center bombing. Khalifa was planning to fly to the Philippines. When the FBI looked inside Khalifa's luggage, they found manuals in Arabic or training terrorists, which covered subjects such as bomb making and other violent activities. Khalifa claims that his possession of the materials were innocent. He found a personal organizer with several contacts. One phone number was for Wali Khan Amid Shah, a member of the Manila cell, which was plotting Operation Bajinka at the time, although these charges wouldn't stick. There were also a listing for an unknown man who might have been Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. Khalifa was placed in solitary detainment, and contents of his luggage were logged and edited. Khalifa was held without bail for several months before being deported to Jordan. In Jordan, a court had convicted Khalifa in absentia for a string of theater bombings. Khalifa faced a possible death sentence as a result, and Khalifa first ordered his deportation by suing the government. On January 6th, Operation Bajik was, was discovered after a fire at Ramsey Yusuf's Manila apartment in, jo, in the jo, jo, Josefa apartments. Investigator found evidence relating to the plot. Abdul Hakim Murad, who was arrested near the apartment after he tried to escape going back for the laptop, had five phone numbers pointing to Khalifa. They also found logs of phone calls to them and from Khalifa before his arrest and contact information on Yusuf's computer. Despite this evidence, forwarded to the United States from the Philippines in March of 95, suggesting Khalifa was funding the foiled Operation Pajinka plot, Khalifa was not arrested, but his belongings were returned, and he was deported to Jordan on May 5th by the INS, as he requested. All this despite the fact that on April 18th, the conviction in Jordan was overturned, as a key witness recounted his testimony. In Jordan, a court acquitted Khalifa, Baez, was also allowed to go. Khalifa left for the Philippines and returned to Saudi Arabia. He was to port him to Lebanon, where he had already been sentenced to death in absentia for conspiracy to carry out terrorist attacks. He was retried and acquitted and then released back to Saudi Arabia. Khalifa was arrested in Saudi Arabia shortly after the September 11, 2001 attacks, but was released without charge. Later that year, he publicly condemned Osama bin Laden and publicly distanced himself from al-Qaeda. More suspicious activity was surrounding Khalifa and on January 31st, 2007, the day before his 50th birthday, Khalifa was killed while visiting a gemstone mine he owned in Sakamulko near the town of Sakara in northern Madagascar. Reports state that about 25 to 30 men raided Khalifa's residence in the middle of the night, attacked him with various weapons, and removed his computer and other intelligence materials. His family came to believe that he was assassinated by operators of the Joint Special Operations Command. More questions than answers surround people like Muhammad Jamal Khalifa and anybody within the Al-Qaeda organization. 